had a division strategy that applies the distributed property. I'm going to start with a, a fairly simple uh, division problem to model this strategy. I'm going to look at 36 divided by 3. To use this strategy, we're going to look at our dividend and think about our divisor. Our dividend is 36, 3 is our divisor. We want to think about numbers that we could pull out or decompose from the 36 that's, that are easily uh, divisible by 3. And so if I look at 36, I know that I could decompose it into 30 and 6. I have a fairly easy middle math problem. So now I'm going to divide each of those. 30 divided by 3. And that was 10. And then the 6 divided by 3, we know is 2. So now I've actually here, I've actually taken the 36 and I've divided it by 3 and I see that it is 12. So there are 12 groups of 3 in 36. So 36 divided by 3 is equal to 12. <coughs> So that's using a fairly simple problem. So now let's bump it up a little bit, and I'm going to leave that first example so you can refer to it on the screen and go to a little bit more challenging to model. So we're going to take the dividend 104. We want to divide it by 8. So once again, we look at our dividend. We think about our divisor. We're trying to find out how many groups of 8 there are in 104. So we think, what can, what's easy for me to divide 8 by? Well, I know that 80 can be easily divided by 8, and so that would leave 24, which is also a nice number. So now I'm going to take the 80. 80 divided by 8 is equal to 10. It's always nice to get multiples of 10. And then 24 divided by 8 is 3. It's one of our basic facts. And so now that I can see that I have taken my 104, I've divided it by 8, and that would be 13. So 104 divided by 8 is 13. There are 13 groups of 8 in 104. 